Uh, good morning, dear colleagues. Uh, Dobre utra, kolegi. It's a great pleasure, pleasure for me to participate in this workshop, and I'm glad to represent University of Helsinki and talk about uh, my experience of being a PhD student here. Uh, my name is Ksenia Tabakova. I grew up in Russia in Leningradska region, and I graduated from St. Petersburg State University from Faculty of Geography. Uh, I belong to the doctoral program in atmospheric uh, sciences. Uh, this program is uh, responsible for uh, providing uh, my science curriculum. Uh, my doctoral program, together with six other programs, belongs to the doctoral school in natural sciences. Uh, this doctoral school is sort of like umbrella organization that provides me transferable skills curriculum and also enables me to take the courses from other doctoral programs. I am employed by the INAR, uh, Institute for Atmospheric and Earth System Research, with, which is a part of University of Helsinki. And I study uh, aerosol cloud interactions in climates like Finland or Russia. Recently, I have uh, been also working as a project officer in the International uh, European Project. And additionally, I'm interested in education and I have been uh, part of the development team uh, of massive open online courses in University of Helsinki. So in order to obtain a doctoral degree, as Sini said, uh, there are two essential parts every student must accomplish. The first big part is, of course, taking courses. And at the moment, PhD student has to take uh, 30 uh, credits of subject specific studies, which is approximately six fully loaded courses with uh, lectures, exercises, report or exam. And sometime before we actually had the requirement of 50 credits. And then you take uh, 10 credits of transferable skill studies. Uh, I will talk also a bit more about them uh, in detail later this afternoon. And then, of course, you must write and defend dissertation, which in INAR typically comprised of four to five uh, papers published in peer-reviewed journals and an introductory text. And you undergo public defense. So taking courses is a significant part of becoming a doctor of science. At the University of Helsinki, uh, science-related courses, uh, sorry, we have some problems here. Um, science related uh, uh, courses provided by doctoral programs and, and these courses are based on state of the art knowledge. Lectures are given by active researchers and therefore students learn science based on the best available information. Uh, in my doctoral program uh, curriculum aims to support research work by offering courses on a variety of topics that cover most of the disciplines within my field. And I, as a student, have virtually full freedom to select any course that I find useful. For example, for my research on aerosol cloud interactions, I have taken aerosol science, cloud physics, remote sensing techniques, data analysis, uh, to name a few. But I have also taken courses that are not directly covering my work. Because I strongly believe that if I want to understand my field better, I need to go beyond the things that I do the most and know the most. And wide selection of courses in curriculum enables multidisciplinarity and opens for me new paths in collaboration. And of course, you just never know what you might work on in the future after you graduate. The system we have here at University of Helsinki is pretty flexible and I am in full control of my education. Curriculum is heavily based on the latest advancement in research and I am guaranteed to learn what is my field up to. And it makes the curriculum what I would call alive. New courses appear all the time and different formats are also available. For example, we have traditional lecture courses, laboratory courses, seminars, and of course, new very popular online courses. Then moving on, in the University of Helsinki, it is the doctoral schools that provide transferable skill studies. The role of these studies is first and foremost to assist research work, just like any other course. Interpersonal science communication, management skills, or technology literacy, all these skills are utilized during studies and research. 
And that is exactly why in Helsinki we have this requirement. It gives us support to excel in what we do. Furthermore, transferable skills are called transferable because you can take them with you whenever you go, wherever you work. And this includes jobs outside of academia. I also believe that gaining transferable skills by means of targeted education helps us to grow as a human beings. In Helsinki, transferable skills education happens in truly interdisciplinary and multicultural environment and everyone has a chance to learn something from peers. And I always found that the most uh, enriching experience in taking transferable skill studies. Uh, I would separate current transferable skills offering in my doctoral school for two big groups. The first is directly, research, di di directly related to the research work, uh, for example, conference presentation, scientific writing, grant writing, open science, uh, and so on. And another group is more about social interaction, for example, management, leadership, organization, as well as pedagogy. And from 10 compulsory credits, at least one must be research ethics, but the rest are up to your liking. Now, uh, a little bit about the thesis. In INAR, my institute, by far, most of the theses are based on the published research work. You need to have four to five uh, research papers in peer-reviewed journals. And most of the PhD candidates here have two to three first author papers, and then two to three second, third, sometimes fourth author uh, papers. The most important, of course, here is to have substantial enough input to a given paper, for example, uh, doing part of analysis and writing part of the text. And only, only rarely PhD candidates have four first author papers in their thesis, because it is much harder to write uh, for first author papers. After your papers are taken care of, you write an introduction text to the field and a summary of your work. So you need to put together all your results into the cohesive story, 40 to 60 pages long. Then you append to this introduction your papers and your thesis is now ready. It then undergoes the review and approval procedure and this basically minimizes the risk that you will fail on your defense. In Finland, we have uh, public defenses, which means that anybody can come and listen to you. You are obliged to give a 20 minutes lecture outlining your research, which is followed by at least one hour long uh, scientific discussion with an opponent, an expert in your field. And opponent can ask any sort of question from very general to very specific. But since it is your research that uh, saw the light through tears and sweat and pain, it is most likely that you will know uh, most of the answers. And it's okay if you don't know some answers, that's like totally fine. Overall, a being PhD student in University of Helsinki and INAR uh, means being a professional and being treated as such. PhD student does a lot of uh, heavy lifting, uh, data collection, analysis, writing papers. In INAR, we practice and worship horizontal learning. You learn from professors, but they also can learn really a lot from you. And peer-to-peer -peer education is particularly effective. Early on in your career, you have the opportunity to be in charge of something. For example, you might plan campaigns, conferences, mentor master students, take care of the projects, and so on. So most important thing is to have such aspirations and you will be provided the opportunity to do such work. And the greatest thing perhaps is a lack of the strong hierarchy and absence of artificial boundaries. We are all equal and we are equally treated and respected, regardless of what is our position within the academia, how long is our CV or where are we coming from. The community we have here is very open-minded and altruistic. Supervisors, of course, remain being in charge, 
but they're always ready to hear you and accommodate your wishes and listen to your ideas. So if all goes well with your studies in thesis, a uh, PhD from University of Helsinki is an efficient problem solver, not easily intimidated by unexpected, unfamiliar issues. You are a multifaceted uh, worker that can take care of various tasks. You have good communication skills. You're well integrated into the scientific community because collaboration inside and outside of the institute is fostered and supported. And of course, you are independent researcher, comfortable enough to generate own ideas and realize them. And altogether, it makes a Doctor of Science from University of Helsinki a competitive and sought after employee in the academic world around the globe. So my uh, last message here is that um, being a PhD student in University of Helsinki can be quite hard, sometimes really frustratingly hard. But all that hard work uh, really pays off. Uh, thank you for the attention. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them. <laughs>